Hey you guys, welcome back to Michael Claire to Arts. Today we're going to be reviewing something really cool, so stick around. So this video is probably going to be, I don't want to say a little bit longer because most of my videos are around the 45 minute to hour range, but there's a lot to cover in this particular video and I want to make sure and cover it because the device that we're going to be reviewing today, the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt laser engraver cutter is important and it requires a lot of covering, right? So the people at Creality contacted me and they said, hey, we saw that you reviewed one of our products and we want to go ahead and continue that relationship and send you a laser engraver. So the product that I had reviewed before actually is behind that monitor right there. And it is their um, their Ender 5. So their Ender 5 uh, 3D printer, um, filament printer. And it's been a workhorse here in the studio for about three years. And I do a lot of prototyping, um, prototype prints and stuff like that for my professional business. I'm a toy designer, so I have to have those prototypes whenever I design and see if they work uh, you know, in the real world and, and, and see, um, you know, in terms of scaling and stuff like that. And the Ender 5 has really been a workhorse. And what makes it great, not only is the price point, right? Price point's always important, but also the versatility. I was, I've been able to print PLA, PETG, ABS, and, uh, most re <clears throat> recently, TPU. So TPU filament's really great. So whenever you need something that's a little flexible, or if you're printing stuff like keychains or any kind of action figures or anything like that, TPU is really good for that because it's durable. You can ship it and not worry about some of the issues that you would with possibly um, PLA because PLA is a little weak. Uh, PETG requires higher temperatures, but it's very durable, but there's some challenges there. You kind of have to fine tune what you really like printing in. But that being said, uh, like I said, the, uh, the, the Ender, the Ender five has been really good. I've upgraded the filament, uh, head, the print head, and some of the other things that, um, really help that particular device. Now they do have different price points for that printer, but we're not talking about that printer today. We're talking about the Falcon two pro laser engraver cutter. And this thing is amazing. So I went on their website after they contacted me and I was very interested to see because I've never really used a laser engraver cutter before. And this is gonna be really fun for me because I love learning. I love learning new processes. I love learning new equipment. I love learning new software. And this really gives me the opportunity to kind of be your, right? Your uh, eyes on, um, on possibly something you've been looking at in the marketplace. Some of you, that found this video are probably looking at buying a laser engraver and cutter. And, and what's nice about this particular device is the fact that it's, it's very robust. It's got a great company behind it. It's got different price point tiers, right? If you want to, if you want to cut thicker material, it's got a 40 watt and I believe even a 60 watt laser option. So I'm very, very interested in, in setting this. First of all, we're going to do an unboxing, right? Because unboxings are necessary. Setting up this this device is huge. It's very large. I, I I'm gonna have to kind of go through and explain how big it is. I had to set up an area over here on the right hand side of my studio to facilitate this new device. It requires a little bit of mechanical knowledge, right? It does include instructions. There is customer service support, but at the end of the day, it can't be too difficult for a guy like me. And I was able to put together the Creality Ender 5, no problem. It was, it was, came in a huge box, just like this one. And it uh, went together pretty much flawlessly. And it's been, uh, it's been working now um, for three years. So I anticipate this to be very similar to the Ender 5. And uh, what we're going to do basically, like I said, is we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to look at all the parts. We're going to kind of talk about them, talk about the fit and finish and the quality of the products. And then we're going to set it up and then we're going to look at the software and we're going to start using it. And one of the things that uh, I was really just really stoked about is the technology that's in this thing, right? It's got a camera, it's got all the tools that you'll need to set up a professional situation so you can possibly make some money. That's what, you know, we all want to do. I'm in the prototyping business, so I have a full-time job, you know, designing toys, but you could actually buy a product like this 
You could do, you know, ornaments. You know, I went out and purchased some of these little wooden uh, blanks that I can do ornaments for made of wood. And you could purchase these things. You know, I think I got, I think 40 of them or 50, 30 or 40 of them for, um, for 20 bucks off Amazon. And you can start doing your own little business on the side, your little side hustle or, or doing stuff for your friends or doing stuff prototyping in your professional business. Etching, laser engraving and cutting is something that I think is used to be reserved for the big boys, right? You'd have to go and, oh, I need something laser cutted I'm gonna, or, or hydro cutted, you know? But laser cutting was kind of like way off in the distance. I don't know how to do that. I'm going to have to take it somewhere. Nowadays, you can get a, a product like the uh, Falcon 2 Pro and set it up in your studio and uh, start doing laser cutting. That's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and get started unboxing and uh, we'll talk about everything that I see. And uh, hopefully we can get really good shots of the fit and finish, the quality, the packing. That's very important. And overall, just a feel of, uh, of, of the product. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is the box that it came in. It was delivered via UPS. No, FedEx. FedEx delivered this. You can see the box is very utilitarian, designed to protect the unit. It is a very large box. I don't know how much it weighs, but I definitely needed help taking it in the house. All right, unboxing the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 22 Watt Laser Engraver Cutter. That's a mouthful. So it's a huge box. My studio has limited space. So basically I had to set it on the floor and go through layer by layer. Very, very, very well packed. Everything seems to be in order from the nice little stickers they included to all of the really important items such as the laser head, the fan, um, and the power supply, everything's got its own little place. I actually, after I got done with everything, unboxing everything, I really kind of felt bad storing it, getting rid of it because it was so well done. The unit itself is extremely robust and well made. Everything was in order, nothing was missing. Everything was tightly packed and relatively easy to get to. So kudos to Creality. You know, I was actually delightfully surprised as you saw in the time-lapse video, it's not too complex, right? I mean, you have some of the nuts and bolts and stuff that you have to put stuff together. But overall, I think in terms of streamlining and how Creality has, I don't want to say dumbed down because nothing's dumb about this. I think that uh, they have to make, they have to do things for, you know, a myriad of different uh, technical ability, technically ability people. And from what I can see, it actually looks pretty simple. So I'm gonna put you guys again on time-lapse and we're gonna go ahead and start assembling the Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt laser engraver cutter. One of the things that I always make sure and do is read the instructions. I can't tell you how many times that me as a user has run into issues with a product and there's a really cool sticker sheet that they included with it as well so yeah this is uh this is pretty awesome what's really nice too is they kind of give you a flow chart here right product assembly view the product installation steps then adjust the focus and you can either go to the g-code for the first creation or you can install the software make engraving picture so on and so forth that's really cool and then they show the falcon 2 pro assembled with what looks like a air purifier that's pretty cool i know that sometimes other youtubers don't do this but i just want to make sure you kind of get a bit get a full feel of exactly what I'm going through so you can expect something similar. Obviously looking at the instructions, a lot of words, a lot of pictures of things that you will encounter, right? All the items in the box, assembly box, so on and so forth, and step-by-step -step instructions going all the way through to the final unit which we will get to. I'm excited. All right, putting together the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. Yeah, whenever I first unboxed this thing, I was delightfully surprised just because of the simplicity of the directions as well as the efficiency at which 
they've really laid things out in a way that really you can't do a lot wrong. I did have a couple challenges on the hood, but that only had to do with the acrylic being flexible and getting it in the channel correctly. But overall, everything was just one, two, three. If I had a problem, I referenced the instructions. And overall, I basically give it a 10 out of 10 in terms of ease of setup. And it was a little large, right? It's large, but overall, you know, again, I give Creality big thumbs up. I did have to take that fan off to get it um, mounted correctly, but that was just like maybe two minutes. So overall, it was awesome. And here's the unit all set up. It took me roughly an hour to set everything up. It wasn't too hard, just as long as I followed the instructions. I'm going to get into the software here in a moment, but I've got everything set up. I've got my exit tube right here. I've got all my power cables. I've got it hooked up to my Mac. There's the camera. There's the main outputs cable. And I've got a test print right now. This is part of the files that they send you whenever you get the printer. It looks like their logo. Pretty awesome. Very excited. Here's my solution for venting of the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. You can see that it's right smack dab in the corner of my studio, and I have already done a couple engraving burnings, and the smell, even though I routed this particular hose outside this window, I still had blowback. So, because I'm cheap, <laughs> and I think that just as long as it works, uh, even in the temporary, until I can get this made out of wood, this is just a piece of cardboard, and I cut a hole in it and went ahead and ran the hose through this. Now, they do make a fitting for, like, a dryer that I'll probably end up buying, and I believe that's made out of metal, and you can stick it in the window, and you can push it back, and then it has the vent that you just attach the hose to. I think this is probably the temporary solution, and overall, I think it out, turned out pretty good. Just a piece of cardboard cut to fit, sandwiched in the window, and some painter's tape so it doesn't end up ruining the window sills here of this 75-year-old house. So anyway, this is my Again, solution. With the simplistic nature of the way Creality has designed this product, there isn't too much in terms of complexity when it comes to this particular unit. So the hood slides up, revealing the print bed as well as the print head. Manually can move this. Here's the 22-watt laser head. Now, interesting thing is, whenever you receive the unit, you can see these adjustment screws right here. So it's very, very important, especially whenever you're starting to print, to get everything calibrated correctly. And one of the ways that you do that is going through the props. Here's the camera overhead that shines down and records. Well, not records, but it shows you what is active currently on the print bed. And then this little metal piece right here is included and you can see it's got different thicknesses and that's how you calibrate the distance from your material that you're cutting to the actual laser head unit. So what you do is you lay it flat, you go ahead and place it over that particular measuring device and you adjust the distance between the edge of this and the very top of whatever material that you're using. There are three settings you can see. One of them says engraved cutting thickness of basswood 1 to 0.3 millimeters. One says cutting of thickness basswood 4 to 6 millimeters and cutting of cutting thickness of basswood 6 millimeters. And you obviously do that from the distance. Set this right here and then you adjust up and down. This is very important because if you have it too far away, it's not gonna cut efficiently and it's not going to burn efficiently. So this is a very important tool, so don't lose this. As you can see, it moves freely with your hand. Whenever you have it on, I don't have it on currently because I don't wanna have all that noise. So you can hear, you can hear the micro switches clicking and the panel interface right here Obviously, it has a little house that's home. You hit home, 
This is to adjust the up, right, left, and down of the print head. This is the print uh, button to start or stop. And this is the frame. The frame is also very important. We'll talk about that. Then there's the emergency stop. So let's see, you have something going on in the print bed that you don't like. You press this button right here and it completely locks and stops everything down. That's emergency stop. And to release it, you just turn right and it releases up. So I did talk about the camera. Let's look at the camera really quick. The camera is right here in the hood. It is an HD camera. And here's the USB-C cable that goes to your computer or whatever peripheral uh, main host machine that you're gonna be running the software on. And here is the main USB cable, which is what your computer interfaces with. And there's the power cable. Here is the small compressor that acts as your air whenever you do cutting and engraving. It's very important to have this connected because this will prevent fires and other things from occurring and overburning. This is the power supply going to the air and you can adjust how much air you want to go in or if you want to cut it off completely, you can have it there. Now you can do all this from your software as well. Just giving you a heads up as far as what the different items here on the unit are. Here's the fan right here. And you can see the cable that gets routed down to the micro switch. Um, so whenever you close this, you can see the color right here. This is very important because the color masks the wavelength of light that the laser emits that could cause damage to your eyeballs. Very cool thing as Creality provides these as well. These are specialized glasses that prevent you from getting eye injury. <laughs> so uh, you, if you're going to watch the print, definitely wear these because this provides you a degree of protection. But at the end of the day, you really need to be wearing your specialized laser, uh, laser future glasses. Very important. So then one of the things that I think is also important is whenever you close this, there's a micro switch on the inside that gets triggered that actually allows the machine to activate. So let's say it was printing, you decide to walk over here and you want to say, oh, this is pretty cool. I want to see it in person. The second you lift this, it shuts the machine down completely and it prevents anybody from actually sticking their hand in and getting it cut off. <laughs> so that's also a very nice feature. I've got this little lamp up here because it helps whenever I see whenever I'm looking on my computer, and I'll show you that in just a moment, to see the print bed a little bit more efficiently. And then this is a really cool feature. So if you don't want anybody to mess with your unit ever, that's what this is. So right now, it will not work at all, no matter what I do. So I have to have the specialized key, goes into the hole, and it turns to the on position, now it will work. This is very important in case you have children or any kind of other human being that wants to mess around with your laser engraver. So those are some of the security features of the unit. Now for cleanup, all we have to do, since you can look down here and you can see some of the debris that accumulates down below after you've done some cutting. And if you're interested in getting rid of some of that debris, the drawer comes out and you can clear all the debris. Now it's important to clear stuff out because you don't want to have a lot of debris down here. As the laser shoots down, it can actually cause a fire. So again, cleaning this out is very important and keeping it clean is very important. You can see, please clean the tray promptly and do not accumulate debris <laughs> because it'll cause a fire. Now, if you do have a fire, there are sensors on the inside that automatically shut the laser off. And if it accumulates too much smoke also, it will shut the unit off. So very cool safety features that this unit has. Now I don't recommend that you just start it and leave and go have, you know, a dinner somewhere. Because it is a very sensitive piece of electronic equipment with a very powerful laser. And if you involve a flammable material such as wood or acrylic or something like that, you go and leave and something happens and then suddenly you're in a spot that you don't want to be. So just read the warnings, read the documentation. It's there for your benefit. 
I can't tell you how many times that I've basically had to go back to the beginning. I call it going back to the beginning. That's basically going back to the instructions and getting exactly what I'm supposed to do in each area pertaining to the device. It definitely says don't leave it by itself. Most people, I don't want to say most people, some people will position this particular unit maybe outside, maybe in a garage, maybe in a shed, somewhere like that, and that's completely fine. I have a limited amount of space and putting it in the studio here really gives me eyes on and the only time that I operated it operate it is whenever I'm in the studio and I've got my eyes on it. It's within three feet from me. Basically, what I'm going to do now is we're going to actually use the unit. Um, I really was kind of on the fence with regards to the software because I didn't want this to be a light burn software installation review setup process video. This is a review of the Creality 22 watt Laser Pro, the Falcon 2, and I want to focus on the unit and not on the software because Creality did not make light burn. Light burn, although is a great piece of software, they do it does cost money. And they do have other options that you can get whenever you buy this unit. It's got uh, Laser GRBL, I believe it's called, and of course Lightburn. And I, I, again, I chose Lightburn because it has a camera support feature and it spoke to me a little bit clearer than the Laser GRBL software did. And I can control the unit from my desktop and do a lot of things in that capacity. So let's go ahead and, and I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a really simple explanation and setup because they Creality provides a myriad of different files for you to access. And that's what we're going to do an overview. Again, this is not a review of Lightburn. I've already done some test prints and I can safely say so far this has been one of the easier experiences I've had pertaining to, to a device like this. I've got uh, quite a few 3D printers in my office and some of them are kind of challenging <laughs> at best. But this one, I, it was pretty easy. Pretty much the only real challenge that I had was uh, calibration. And we're going to go through that really fast um, and let you get an overview again of setting this unit up. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are on my Macintosh. So I put all of the folders and files that came with the unit into a folder here on my desktop and I labeled it Lightburn folder just for easy access. So what's great about what Creality does is the streamlining and simplification of the entire process of receiving the unit, assembling the unit, getting the files in front of you to where the information is very transparent and clear, and accessible. I can't tell you how many times I've received a, some type of unit in that says basically I needed to go to a website, I needed to do a bunch of things, I needed to log in, create a profile. Creality didn't do any of that. They said for our users we want to go ahead and put all the files on the thumb drive, you stick it in your computer, and you just get what you need. They even went so far as to including a specific driver that I had to have whenever I uh, opened the software and basically it's the 22 watt Creality profile that gets downloaded into the software because um, in Lightburn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of the folders and files that they included and hopefully that'll give you a little bit better transparency and understanding whenever you receive the unit. Of course they're gonna include the product manual. We already kind of looked at th through this but it, it basically if you ever to lose the physical version of the uh, of the document of the um, of the manual then you can go on here and you can easily access it and you'll have it basically forever for as long as you'll have your computer um, or the unit itself assembly instructions they include <laughs> what's really fun if you get completely lost if you can't understand or read the instructions look at this you can go in we're going to go ahead and open this. It's a DOCX document, which is basically a Windows uh, document. I'm on a Macintosh, so it's going to open it up in uh, a program called Pages. So basically here, and I click that, open link, and what does it do? It takes me to a video. That's what's really cool. So here's the page contents for the fact you can go in, and it gives for the 40 watt, the 60 watt, and the 22 watt, which is what we have today. So I basically click this, 
and it would show me exactly what I needed to do. And I could probably open this on my phone as well, and it doesn't have to. So even though I did do kind of similar, something similar in mind, I didn't want to go into the minutia of assembling it because it, it, it took a little while and it gets kind of boring. So it's great that Creality provides this for you guys in the thumb drive. So now we get to the nitty gritty. This is one of the important things. And this is something that I, I don't want to say I glazed over, but I didn't realize how important it was until I realized how important it was. The camera and lens alignment procedures. So first time I looked at this, I got information overload. I looked at this and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm going to be here for hours. But it's not. The, Creality wanted to go in and basically, again, being the company they are, they wanted to make sure and cover all the areas. So if you have light burn, which is what I have, and you want to utilize the camera. So what's great about the camera feature on this particular unit is it, it shows the print area, basically the burn area, and you can start taking your projects and putting them on the surfaces of the product that, or not the product, or the of the material that you're going to be burning onto, and line it up. It's very important that you follow the instructions, go through the prompts, do exactly what they say, because if you don't, then your camera won't be lined up properly, and you'll get maybe an offset, or you won't get the proper scaling, and you can't quite figure out why you've placed your, your image on the material, but it's just not turning out the way you want it to. Take your time. Take your time, calibrate the lens, uh, and get the alignment correct so you won't have any issues. It took me about three times to get it. That's because I'm stubborn. And I, I literally went through and I'm like, oh, I can do this, I can do this. That's, again, me having so much experience as an illustrator and working in the 3D world, that kind of worked against me a little bit, plus a little bit of pride. So I had to get rid of that to be able to finally get it correct. And once I did, it was awesome. If I had done it the way they said to do it the first time around, I wouldn't have had any issues. Here's a really good file. This is called the parameter uh, recommendations. And you look at it and you go, wow, that's a lot of numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open it and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you why it's important. So this is for the 22 watt version of the Falcon 2 Pro and it goes in and it shows as far as process. I want to engrave, I want to cut. It shows you this is the maximum engraving size, the 22 watt laser, this is the model. Then it goes through the materials. So it shows you, I wanna use basswood, which is pretty much what I've been using. Thickness of two millimeters. Then I wanna do, it. so it says you need to go 40% power, and this is for engraving, 40% power at 6,000 speed. Now we're gonna get into those numbers here in just a moment, but those are settings as per the uh, laser head itself, how fast it goes. 6,000 is a speed. You can go down to 550, 505, 10 and then it would be moving really slow so if you're going fast the laser doesn't have a lot of time to sit on the material therefore it would be engraving so whenever you get down to the cutting area let's look at basswood again and it says okay thickness of two the recommended power instead of 40 for engraving we're going to go 100 percent laser power but then we're going to slow it way down because we're cutting the material so your mind has to be in that in that in that uh in that set of the slower it is, the more time the laser has on the material, therefore it's either going to make it darker or it's going to cut it, depending on the power of the laser. This is something I recommend you have up, especially whenever you're doing projects, then you can uh, you can determine what your, your, uh, your settings are inside the software. Very important, this is a very important file. You might even go so far as to printing it up and maybe laminating it, putting it in front of you. So then we go to software operation tutorial. They include the drivers for Windows 7, which is interesting because Windows 7 is maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, hopefully uh, they'll have something a little bit more modern, but at the end of the day, it's fine. Uh, I was able to use it on my PC. And here's LaserGRBL. This is a free version 
of the software so it gives you a link to download and you go in and set your software up as as it uh, as it directs you so I said to myself well laser GR bill is not really my jam I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with Lightburn. so Lightburn, and here's here's the uh, the uh, LBDEV, which I believe is the profile for this particular printer, the 22 Pro. I'm sorry, the Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt. So if you go here, Lightburn. So this is the bread and butter. If you use Lightburn, this is why I said it's not a Lightburn software tutorial because I want you to look at this. Look at all the settings, and this is just going in for the first swing. This is important again because you have to get all of these 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 variables in line and and so you can go ahead and start uh, cutting start um, engraving and doing the things that the uh, device is really designed for it is a free version uh, for 30 days and then after that you have to pay a fee I think it's under a hundred dollars um, might be a hundred dollars a year I believe so yeah you can see all the sub menus the menus all of these things, which is indicative of any piece of software that deals um, in the modern age, right? You have so many settings, and sometimes you get a little overwhelmed. I'm going to be honest with you. I looked at this, and I, I thought I was a little overwhelmed. I didn't know the language, but again, going back to what Creality provides, they provided me with all of the tools I needed to go ahead and be success as long as I was patient. I, ex I didn't expect to get it right on the first time. And uh, I, I just, I, I kept moving forward. And you know, what's really cool is I reached out to the uh, people that contacted me and they were so friendly. They got with me, they had a customer service uh, person that uh, kept directing me in the right way. And uh, in no time, I was able to get uh, some really fun prints out. So then we go to uh, G-Code for, um, for two millimeter basswood. So they include, two pieces of wood in the package uh, for you to kind of play around and test on, as well as calibration. So uh, they also include two files that you can practice with. One of them's an eagle cut that you can uh, cut out of the two millimeter basswood, and the other one is a Cura uh, engraving of their logo. So we're not gonna get into that, but just know that right off the bat, you have two files that you can execute on the machine until you start getting a little bit more understanding about the software or you download um, download something from a forum. If you're interested, what's really cool is if you have access to like Facebook or some of those other places, there are forums that offer a ton of files for free. I don't know if you should use those as per uh, creating stuff and selling it, but for practice and having fun and getting better with the, uh, with the unit uh, itself and getting better acquaint uh, acquainted with the software, I think that that's perfectly fine uh, as long as if you do decide to use that and post it on social media, you hashtag the original artist that created it. Um, so, obviously it's a piece of electronic equipment. Obviously it's complex. Obviously there's going to be challenges here and there as you progress through your learning process. They definitely have covered a lot because it says description for error code PDFs. They have different error codes similar to what you would have if you plugged in one of those OBD2 readers to a car. Whenever you get an error code on your car and you look it up and it tells you what's going on. They did the same thing here. You're, you're using the machine daily, suddenly you get an error code. You don't know what that is. Well, here is the error code PDF that kind of explains what's going on so you can solve that without having to go and first of all, get upset. Don't get upset. You can go in, here's the, the error code information. Then we move on to description for GRBL configuration parameters. So I didn't use this, I used Lightburn. So uh, I'm just gonna go through this really quick. Obviously uh, in the software you enter some, certain things in and um, yeah, see I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna go into this. <laughs> okay, and then we go, and then we go to the fact section. So, Here's the facts, and these are things that obviously you can read uh, in the in the documentation. But they wanted a fact sheet for easy access. 400 meters to 400 millimeters to 415 millimeters. It's a pretty big um, a pretty big 
uh, print bed. I mean, it's a large machine, so you can get some pretty decent uh, engravings uh, out of this thing. It uses a semiconductor laser source, 12 watt, 22 watt, or 40 watt. Um, and it, I'm not going to go through all the questions, but it's just some of the questions that are basically asked and things that you need to learn. These are things that you need to learn. I jumped in this. I, I got all the way up to my neck of failure before I started going through all of the documentation because I really wanted to see what it could do. I mean, come on. I, I know what I'm doing, right? I didn't know what I was doing until I finally got in and read the documentation from Creality. It tells you, and it basically asks the questions that I would ask. How do I focus the laser? What should I do if the engraving effect is inconsistent in depth? What is the engraved effect different from the original image? Why? All these things that I was, I kept asking myself, it's all right here. It's all right here. It can't be any clearer. So then we go to, um, oh, that's me. <laughs> So I actually, I, I started experimenting um, with some of the files that I do because I don't like using other people's artwork per se. I like creating my own stuff. So I created this character right here. His name's Freddy the Yeti. And I was able to actually get him engraved really quickly. And he turned out really cool, as you can see. And I cut him out. So again, experimentation is one of those things that you need to allow yourself to do. Get in there, spend a day, spend two days, spend three days, spend a week. That's what I did. creality has been really patient with me um, pertaining to this review because they sent it to me and they wanted they wanted me to do it, you know, obviously quickly because they want uh, a return on their investment. But on the other hand, they wanted me to make sure that I knew that I was doing. And darned if they didn't keep telling me, take my time, make sure that I know, make sure I'm very clear in, in, in conveying uh, all of my opinions, because they wanted my opinions, not a twisted, right? Not, they don't want to. They, they don't want to twist my opinions at all. They want to get a real viewpoint of exactly um, somebody that has experience with 3D, has experience with illustration, has had 25 years with experience doing toys and uh, 3D sculpting, but then injecting this into the environment. How how am I going to handle it? So they, they've, been, they've been very gracious and very, very patient with me. So there are alarm functions um, for um, you see, laser module alarm functions PDF. So obviously, if an alarm goes off, maybe you need to reset it. Again, the documentation is here. And it, uh, here's the explanation of the air assist. So air assist is important. Um, I'm not sure if all of their devices, uh, down price point wise, maybe the one, the Falcon 2, I'm not sure if it has uh, Air Assist or not. Air Assist is important because Air Assist helps in blowing away the smoke whenever you're doing really detailed work because you can't have smoke inhibit the laser because the laser going through the smoke will cause diffraction and you won't get uh, a proper burn. So read the Air Assist PDF. I read this and I and I had kind of a revelation moment. I was like, oh, okay, now I understand. <laughs> Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and go into the software. Okay, so I've opened the Lightburn software. And as you see over here on the right-hand side, I've got my Creality Falcon camera selected right there. Uh, it's very important that you select the proper incoming port it does have a bluetooth but i'm i'm not sure if that has to do with my bluetooth i'm pretty sure it is so you select that and then it pulls the creality falcon 2 uh, pro the little driver that's inside okay so because i had to go in and select devices right here so on and so forth all of that is in your setup so as far as getting the image here right here you just update overlay and you're seeing inside of my printer. And what's really cool, uh, obviously all of these are tools that you can utilize and whatnot, but what I'm gonna do is just for simple, simple overview, we're not gonna go into the settings. Again, defer back to the settings in that little uh, USB, um, USB drive, and it's gonna give you everything you need uh, pertaining to getting, getting your software set up correctly for your device. So, if you can see how it's kind of faded, if you don't like that, just go ahead and get rid of that and you can um, get a little bit better 
view of what you're seeing. So here's the deal. I've got a light currently shining down. Uh, I wish, and I'm not sure, because I looked and I looked and I looked and I thought maybe there might have been an LED that was in the camera in the unit, but there isn't. So you're going to probably have to have some type of light source or something over to see a little bit better unless you have an environment in your office that is really bright, which I don't because I like working a little bit darker because it hurt light kind of does things to my eyeballs. So the fade, I think, helps whenever I go ahead and put the artwork on top. So I'm going to go ahead and file import and we're going to go ahead and do that PNG that I showed you earlier. Okay, now here is the entire area to which the print head is going to recognize. Okay, so if I come here and I make it about that big, now this should be, now this is, again, you're looking at this and I'm pretty sure with 6.2, height 6.04, that is where the running ants are. That is not the actual artwork. That's very important to note because whenever you start adjusting things and making sure your image is correct, I always defer back to pictures because I'm simple and I like I like pictures. So again, it, this makes the artwork show up a little bit better. Okay, so then I have to select this. Okay, so then I come over here. Right now I've got it in camera control tab. I'm going to go ahead and hit cuts and layers. Okay, this is the file that it's selected. Just for engraving purposes, this is what we're going to do. So if we go back to our, remember that little file that we looked at earlier? As far as parameter recommendation. So let's go ahead and open that. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Okay, I have basswood in there right now. It's about two millimeters, two and a half millimeters thick. So I'm gonna look and it says basswood, two millimeters, 40% power at 6,000 speed. So we're gonna come back, we're going to look and we're going to double click on this little variable right here, okay? So I can name the layer if I want to. And what's really cool is it already has some of the laser settings. Now, depending on what you're doing, if it's a real simple black and white graphic, it's got a setting. If it's a picture, Oh, yes, the Creality 22 Watt Falcon 2 Pro will do pictures. You just have to set it up correctly. So right now it's at a dither sample and it gives you different, it'll do a half tone, which I thought is really cool. Um, what we're gonna do is something called threshold, which breaks it down to really black and white, um, black and negative space. So currently it's at 20% and in the documentation it's at 40. But I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to probably do about 50% power of the laser because I don't want to cut the wood. And I'm going to do 5,500 because, again, it's kind of like a balancing scale. If you slow one down and you increase the laser, you're probably going to cut through your wood. But if it's a thicker wood or a denser wood, so you're just going to have to, again, play around to see what works best. But that guide is pretty much what you need to go by. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 55 at, at 50%, and then we're going to do, keep everything the same. I have air assist now. Here's, here's the variable. Remember I talked about air assist earlier. So whenever you're cutting, okay, you wanna have air assist on. And the reason why is because you want a nice, um, a, a nice clean line, a nice clean blade to cut that wood. So we're gonna, it says in the documentation for engraving, you turn air assist off. And for cutting, you have air assist on. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna come down here, the material, and we're gonna specify, um, since I have it in inches, we're gonna say it's about a quarter of an inch thick, because that's right around 2.2 millimeters, somewhere around there. So 0.25, okay. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit frame. It goes in and it draws out that square. And you can hear it in the background. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to look at the camera control. And what's really cool is whenever I hit frame, I can actually see it in live time. Now watch, see, it goes.
there you go. So I know it's exactly where it needs to be. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit start and we're gonna engrave it. So depending on the size of your engraving or what you're cutting or the detail, there's quite a few variables with regards to speed. You can also speed it up, but since we slowed it down at 5,500, this particular engraving is gonna take about 15 minutes. I've got it a little bit larger than probably your average. I don't even know what an average would be. I think I've got it about maybe six inches high. So as you see, it is pretty quick, but this particular print's gonna take about 15 minutes. And here's how it turned out. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna do a few more prints just to show you some of the versatility of the device. Maybe some smaller prints, maybe some more complex prints, maybe some with shading. So we're gonna kind of run it through its paces here and see what we come up with. Let's go over and look at him under the light. Oh man, look at that. Just so good. Look at the detail. Wow. What an incredible machine. So good. Okay, so I've imported a new image of my Yeti character holding a Christmas tree, and I've got this on the second layer. Now, one of the things that I had to remember especially as it pertains to order of operations. So whatever is in this top line is going to happen first, whatever is going to happen in the second line, so on and so forth going down. So I want to make sure and do the etching first. Okay, we're at 6,000 speed, 45 power, uh, air assist is off. And what's really cool is, so whenever you're setting these files up and you've got your order of operations over here, I'm going to show you about the cutting here in a second. You can always change the color. So the blue is going to be the image itself. You can see that right there. And then here is the line that I'm gonna be doing the cutting. And this is right here, the running ants. It's very important too um, that you understand how these tools work over here. Again, I'm not gonna go into that because this isn't a light burn review. I just wanna make sure that whenever you start going in there's different operations so here obviously it is the it is the etching mode so whenever I come back and I'm going here to the line which shows in red because it's designated red here on the left hand side I double click and I've got speed at 550 which is really slow and the line is at hundred percent so Again, it's very important that you understand your order of operations as it pertains to the etching process, engraving, and then the cutting process. Um, of course, I've got my wood over here, and every single time I change. Now, I can actually come back, and if I don't, if I just want to cut something out, but I want to have the artwork there, let's say I want the artwork there, I just turn the output off, and all it's going to do is cut this it's going to skip that particular order of operation so and if I want to get rid of it then I can come over here to the right hand side and get rid of it let's go ahead and proceed and here is how it turned out it is very clean overall I think presentation is really nice I didn't go too dark on it this time because I think last time I was a little bit too dark so extremely clean and the cuts are absolutely wonderful beautiful all right more samples okay we're doing the final cut of some more yeti engravings that i've done everything's turning out exactly the way that i set it up let's get them on the desk okay i am super excited let me get this out of the way really quick And here's the wolf man. Here's the pumpkin king. 
nice contrast. Didn't go too dark on the line. And this is, of course, Frankenstein. So much fun. Very happy with the way these turned out. Very simple process, setting it up and execution was absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna do a couple more samples to show you guys the cutting features that this particular unit has. And yeah, these turned out so great. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and move into the cutting feature. Now, like I said before, this is going to be part of a series of videos because the capability of this particular device is so robust and there's so many things you can do with it. I mean, we're already at a lengthy video and I just can't put everything into one video. So we're gonna take one of the files that Creality included on the USB drive and we're gonna go ahead and show you the detail cutting feature that it has. I'm gonna be cutting out of basswood uh, about 0.18 inches uh, thick, about 22 millimeters. So let's see what kind of detail we can get. Shake and bake. Okay, so I wanted to give scale and context in terms of sizing. This is a quarter, obviously, United States quarter. And you can see the crisp, so even down to these right here. This is where I'm most interested in. And this line right here, you're not seeing any burn. Just a wonderful, even on the back side, we see a little bit on the back side here and there, but in terms of cleanliness, the cuts are super clean. Really impressed with the cutting feature. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier in the video was my desire to have a light inside of the unit, possibly near the camera shining down into the print field. And what I failed to understand is it does have a light. It's got one that's on the side and it's just under where you open the hood. So I'll show it to you really quick. This is inside the unit. And you can see that light bar, that LED light bar right there that's on. That's something of course that <laughs> me as a user sometimes take for granted. I was using the unit and I didn't realize that it had that beautiful LED light. Now I've got a supplemental light shining from the top. And of course you can position lights wherever you want to in and around outside the unit. I don't recommend putting anything inside the unit because that wasn't part of the original design parameters, but it does have a light, which is pretty funny that I didn't, I didn't recognize. It was there the and whole time. Of course, time. if you look over here, it's very plain to see, light on or on auto. I have it on currently, and then whenever you switch it to auto, it turns off until you actually start printing and then the light comes on automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that on for now, just because it gives me better whenever I'm framing things up and stuff like that. So yes, it does have an LED light. And before I do my final wrap up, I just wanted to take you guys to Creality.com. Their website is laid out very efficiently and honestly, it's one of the better websites that I've seen from the beautiful pictures to all the really clear information as it pertains to the device. You can go through and see all of the certifications, the safety features. You can see samples that it does. You can see things about design and just get an overview of exactly what you can expect whenever you receive a device such as the Falcon 2 Pro. Depth of feet, not depth of field, but the depth that it can engrave, the sizing, details, camera features, shows you some examples of things that it does, not only on metal, but also on wood, leather, suede, plastics. Shows you the prowess and the power of the different wattages from 22 watts cutting 10 millimeter basswood to up to 40 watts cutting 20 millimeter basswood in one pass. And I'm sure the 60 watt can do even more. Here's the entire print field, small studio, Obviously, they're showing their uh, air scrubber, which I believe retails for about eight or nine hundred dollars. 
different setups as far as what the print bed is. You can have flat or stand mode. And it's showing basically, here's the light. <laughs> Duh. Integrated air assist, so you don't have to worry about um, putting a compressor or anything. It comes with it. Here's the vent and the hood. Compatibility, laser GRBL, light burn, Mac OS, and Windows. And of course, you can always insert your TF card in there and use the front interface. So the 40 watt comes with a bonus 1.6 watt laser module for details. But honestly, after I've seen the detail that the 22 watt can do, I'm not, uh, maybe at one point in time I might upgrade. Yeah. Air purification system mentioned that. And they offer bundles. And here's a lot of information right here. If you're into all of this, which, you know, it's fine. You can do that. So on and so forth. So let's go up here to buy it now and show you the price points. Again, they've got different bundles for you guys. The 60 watt, the Falcon 2 Pro, the Falcon 2 22 watt, and the Falcon 2 40 watt. So these two below don't have the hood like this one does. And I think these might be a little bit of an older option. I'm not sure. I like the hood because again, it gives me that camera option and it vents things out into the outside. So let's say you just want to buy the 22 watt right here and that's about a grand and then whenever you start adding things the 40 watt plus the sheets the 40 watt plus the 1.6 watt plus ender 3 version 3 I don't know what that is oh you get a wow this is pretty cool so you get a 3d printer with this particular combo that's awesome here's the 22 watts right here and then you get some practice sheets transparency acetate acrylic and then of course basswood this unit that i received i got one piece of basswood probably 12 by 12 and then a five i believe a five by five piece of basswood that i was able to practice on i'm sure that's what this one is right now and then here's another bundle where you get the rotary roller which you can do cups on which is really cool that's 1409 that's the 40 watt as well and this one right here which is the rotary roller plus the sheets this is probably the best value in terms of uh, in terms of starter. I mean, this one's probably better because it's got the 40 watt, but this one is probably where I would land just because 40 watts doesn't scare me, but I think just to start out. Now you can upgrade the module up to 40 watts if you wish. I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe this is a better option. And of course, Creality offers a myriad of different price points, different bundles to facilitate whatever your needs may be. So, final wrap up. What did I think of the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt laser engraver cutter? I thought it was absolutely wonderful. Me being an illustrator and artist, I have a propensity sometimes to kind of jump in with two feet and leave my head behind. <laughs> I think a lot of us do that, especially if you have a whole bunch of success uh, with other areas in your life. And I've been doing illustration and design and, and uh, digital illustration for a very long time. I have a high degree of mechanical knowledge. I've restored quite a few cars and me jumping in with two feet kind of left my head behind. So whenever I first started out, I had some speed bumps and that is completely fine. I talk a lot uh, on my channel about failing faster and whenever you fail faster you can get to the end result much quicker and even though I had some failures I was able to contact Creality and basically go back to the instructions. Creality laid things out in such a way that honestly even in spite of my inability sometimes to really read between the lines which is read the instructions I, I was able to set it up and get everything running rather quickly. So fit and finish, awesome. Product that it creates, incredible. Price point, I think for around a thousand bucks that you could make that up. If you started your own business, uh, selling on Etsy, selling on eBay, selling wherever, you could probably make that back within the first month, depending on how you market yourself. This device is wonderful. Fit and, like I said, fit and finish, power, ease of operation, Software, okay, so software. 
you know, Creality did not create Lightburn. They didn't create Laser GRBL. They just made their their products compatible with it because you have to have a piece of software or you have to have files that you can import into the machine to be able to execute said projects. Um, I think the biggest thing for me whenever it comes to getting a device like this would be overcoming that hurdle. Some people possibly, oh, I retired. I want to start doing laser engraving. I've always wanted to do it. Okay, so do you have any experience with software? Have you ever set software up? Have you ever installed drivers? Have you ever had machines talk to each other via network? Have you ever done any of that? And if you haven't, just take it slow, follow the directions, follow the prompts. And at the end of the day, they have videos. There are videos that can help you not only on YouTube, but on the stick, on the Creality stick. They've got a PDF where you can click on videos and it'll walk you through. Basically, they want you to succeed. Once you receive this device, Creality wants you to succeed. I, I originally was a little kind of shy about getting into this technology because it's outside my box. My box is uh, 2D uh, illustration, drawing, painting. Um, and then I do 3D, uh, 3D printing, 3D sculpting. And I always looked at stuff like this, creating actual stuff like this as being kind of crafty. I'm not really a craft guy, but this this really kind of slipped in under the radar and hit that hit hit multiple buttons in in my in my uh, in my art world. I think that this once I start getting into it and how you can layer cutouts and how you can create things and some of the files I've seen, some of the things I've seen online. Uh, with this with this particular device, um, and of course the 40 watt and the 60 watt, it's incredible what you can do. And who wouldn't want to do stuff like this? Like I said, this particular device is kind of a game changer for me because I I have been kind of on the fence about creating sculptures and printing them and stuff like that. I definitely will look into creating a store and creating actual objects and selling them. This this is uh, somebody like me who's an entrepreneur and somebody that is always looking to kind of fill in those slots in between projects because being a contractor, freelancer, sometimes there's lulls. So you definitely need that other fire that's going, tend that fire, right? You have multiple fires going at once so you can have a residual income. And this definitely will, um, will help me out uh, overall. So big shout out to Creality for... Um, sending me this particular device. They didn't have to send it to me. And I, I, I never really, like I said, I never really looked into laser engraving as being an option, but now I'm going to, I'm going to talk it up. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, this is only one video of probably three videos I'm going to do because like I said earlier, this device can do so many different things that it would be such a shame for me to just do one video and just say, see you later. I will be doing uh, another video based upon the software on Lightburn, and also I will be doing a video because I'm probably going to go ahead and order the rotary tool, the, the rotary that it can laser engrave uh, around on rotary stuff like cups and stuff like this because that's pretty cool too, selling a product and picking stuff up and, and being able to turn it and make some profit. So every little bit helps the channel. Um, and definitely I wanted to give a big shout out to Creality. They did not ask me to give them a glowing review. <laughs> glowing lasers, that's funny. So the fact that this turned out the way it did, especially when I had a few hiccups here and there, just goes to show you how much uh, Creality is dedicated for your success. I've used their, their Ender 5 uh, Pro for uh, going on three years now. And have I had hiccups? Yeah, but it had nothing to do with the device. I think they're completely doing things the right way and their products uh, definitely have a firm presence in the marketplace. And just because some new shiny whatever comes along doesn't mean you should jump ship. Uh, Creality is a great company, and I highly recommend you look into their products. They've got stuff at different price points. They're 3D printers, they're laser engravers, and based upon my experience with them, um, you know, especially the Ender 5 Pro being a workhorse in my studio, uh, and I'm a professional toy designer. So, again, big shout out to Creality. Uh, big thanks. And uh, I look forward to creating stuff for them in the future. All right. Thank you guys for visiting the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. 
And if you get a chance, take a moment, stop and smell the roses because uh, your lovely, lovely time dedicated to all the things that you think make a difference. Sometimes it's good to just stop and smell the roses. All right. Thank you guys. And we'll see you next time.